people keep asking me across social media platforms, Saj, how is it you keep finding these amazing deals, especially in a challenging market like this? Whether you're brand new to property or whether you're somebody that's very experienced, this is something many people struggle with, finding the deals. And in this video, I wanna share with you the three big mistakes that I see people making when they're looking for deals. If you're watching my videos for the first time, my name is Saj Hussain, and on this channel, I use my 15 years of property investing experience to ultimately help you get further faster in your property investing journey. We do that by having three videos a week, really to help you build on your property knowledge and experience. Regardless of which property strategy you follow, whether it's rent to rent, whether it's HMO, whether it's flipping, whether it's developing, whatever the strategy is, and regardless of how much money that you have, whether you're starting with lots of money or no money or a small amount of capital, the key thing is being able to find deals. So why is it so many people struggle to be able to get past that first hurdle and find the deal? So this is one of our projects that we're at right now. It's a HMO refurbishment. It's a, quite a substantial Victorian property. We'll go on through inside and I'll talk about step number one because it's a little bit warmer, frankly, inside than it is out here. So let's go on through and talk about the biggest mistake people make when they get started looking for deals. The single biggest mistake that I see people making when they're trying to find property deals is not having a clear criteria in terms of what it is that they're looking for. So why is it that people get involved in property? You know, whether they're doing developing, whether it's uh, HMOs or whatever it might be, the different strategies people follow. But people are interested in property for one clear objective, and that is to make money. And I get that, and I get people want to get involved in property because they want to make money. However, there needs to be a link between making money in property and what type of property it is that you're actually doing. So when people say, yeah, I'm just looking for a good deal. If you see a good deal, if you find a good deal, let me know. That doesn't really make sense. What does that actually mean? And I remember, you know, years ago when I used to source property and I used to sell deals on, it's not something I do right now, but I did many years ago. And I'd speak to somebody and I'd say, yeah, you, are, you know, I source property. What is it you're looking for? Yeah, if you get a really good deal, let me know. And I'd go away confused initially thinking, uh, yeah, okay, I got lots of good deals or I'm finding deals. But what does that actually mean? But then over time, I started quizzing people. Tell me what that means. What is it you're trying to achieve? And I started discovering many people don't really have a clear criteria and they're the ones that fail to move forward and get the deals because they don't actually know what a deal is. They don't recognize it when it shows up. And if you don't know what you're looking for, how do you actually recognize it when it does show up? So it's having a clear criteria, what's gonna help you achieve the outcome that you want. So when we look at property deals, the best place to start is the end. Start with the end in mind. Where is it you're trying to get to with that particular deal? So for example, it might be a property you buy, you renovate to sell for a profit. It may be something you purchase because you want to get a high income off it. You may be converted to a high-end HMO like the one that we're in today. That way you can start backwards and work out, right, this is what I need to achieve. What type of property is going to fit that criteria and where is it going to be? So for instance, for me, it's finding houses that are large Victorian three-story terraces, probably four bedroom houses. They're about a hundred years old. They're nice, big, spacious houses in key locations. That's my criteria. And I've got a price range around 250,000 pounds. I'm happy to, happy to pay. So no, that's not a perfect criteria, but that's enough to be able to work out what is it I'm looking for. Now, if I'm flipping properties, I might have a slightly different criteria. And that criteria might be, I wanna find properties that are in very good locations where I can add significant value. I can force up the value of that property by making it to a stunning modern home and be able to sell that for a profit. And that profit needs to be 20 to 30% range in terms of what I'm trying to achieve. So this way, it means it focuses your mind in terms of what you're looking for. And it also helps you articulate to other people that you need to speak to, whether it's sources, whether it's estate agents, whether it's people you're working with, whether it's investors who are gonna fund your deals, you can clearly articulate, this is what I'm looking for. This is how the number's gonna work. This is how we're gonna exit. And I think that is the thing that most people fall over on when they look to start getting finding deals. 
This particular property that we're in, it's a six bedroom HMO that's been fully refurbished and is a high end HMO. I will do a walkthrough through this particular house. And we were here today just checking up in terms of progress where we've got to, we've nearly finished, a little bit of snagging and things left and just need to clear everything out, get the cleaning in, get the dressing done. We'll be back doing a walkthrough. Idas will be with me as well. He spent a lot of time working on this project as well. We'll go through some of the details of what we've done here. But one of the reasons we're here today is talking about the location, the criteria of the property. When we acquired this property and when we first found it, the criteria that we were looking at is HMOs, is it gonna fit what we're looking for? Is it got the right size rooms? Is it lend itself to what we want to do? Which is why I like the Victorian style housing, like we're in the attic space right now. We have two rooms up here in the attic and they're nice sizes, they've been laid out really well. So that means we can convert this and create the space that we want to because the main structure is here. It means we don't have to do massive amounts of changes. So this is what we're looking for criteria wise. Then the location is another key factor. Here we're very, very close to city centre. We're actually in Edgbaston, if you know Birmingham at all. And it's understanding the market and the localities. This is not London. It's not you can let a room pretty much anywhere because there's so much demand. You can just let your rooms out here. The location is key. When we want to do high-end rooms, we want to charge a premium for those rooms. And we have lots of rooms in Birmingham, hundreds and hundreds of rooms that we manage within Birmingham. And our highest rents are around £800 for a room with the lowest ones being around £300. So of course we want to achieve the highest rents. How do we achieve the highest rents? It's the location, the size, the style, the finish, but all that can only happen if we start off with the right product and finding the right house in the first place. And by applying that criteria, it means we end up with the right property in the right location to create what we want so we can exit out the transaction the way we want. And for this one, we've taken all our money out of it, or we will do once we finish. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. We're going to talk about the second biggest mistake people make when it comes to finding deals. We'll do that in the car on the way back to the office. Just before we do that, if you're interested in locations and getting the location right for your specific type of deals that you're looking for, then make sure you check out the link in the description below for a video I did earlier specifically on locations. And of course, it goes without say, but I'm going to say anyway, if you're enjoying this content, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel as well, enable the notification bell. By enabling the notification bell, it means YouTube will let you know when these videos are out and you're up to date with the latest ones we do. It shocks me when I look at the stats on the YouTube channel in terms of the number of people that view the videos that are not actually subscribers. And hey, look, it helps me out as well if you want to subscribe to the channel because it means we can get this content out to more people and the time and effort I'm putting into this means that actually I'm helping more people. So do that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's now head on over to the office and talk about the big mistake I see as number two. The second biggest mistake that I see people making is extreme due diligence. So what I mean by extreme due diligence? They either do so much due diligence or they do very little due diligence. It tends to be one way or the other. Now, if you're doing very little due diligence, it tends to be, yes, this looks okay. You jump in with both feet. You don't really think about and look through all the things that might be key to understand if it's actually gonna work, this is gonna be a good fit, or you rely on somebody else telling you it's a good deal and you do it without really understanding yourself. So the due diligence is important, but not doing enough due diligence is definitely suicidal. But then the other extreme, of that is people that analyze a deal, then they reanalyze it, then they overanalyze it, and then they end up talking themselves out of the deal because they think it doesn't work. For example, on a HMO, they'll say, well, my voids, I need to run at 50%, my maintenance needs to be 25%. And you know, if, if those are your numbers, it definitely isn't gonna work. It isn't gonna be a good deal. And yes, you will look at it, you look at the spreadsheet and think, well, this doesn't work. Well, the reason it doesn't work because you're being unrealistic about how those numbers are gonna work. So, you know, if you have, 50% voids and clearly you're doing something wrong from the opposite. You shouldn't have voids at that level. You know, our voids typically run at less than 10%. And that's what we aim for, you know, often less than 5%. Right now with the pandemic, the numbers are a little bit higher, probably closer to the uh, 10%. But you have realistic numbers. And if it's your first deal and you're not quite sure what those numbers are, then you need to speak to other people who have the experience so they can give you some guidance on what are realistic numbers. And then you, when you analyze, you can look at that. So for example, if you're selling a property, 
you're unrealistic about what you might be able to achieve. I mean, actually, right now you're on. We're in a postcode uh, now, which is in uh, we're in Edgbaston at the moment in South Birmingham, which is very um, uh, close to where a lot of our HMOs are. We were in Edgbaston earlier as well. But in this postcode, the house prices will vary in property prices from maybe under hundred thousand pounds to possibly close to four million pounds all in the same region it's crazy and so when you're doing due diligence say safety for example flipping a property you need to be realistic about what you're going to be able to achieve and that's by having solid information and being realistic and not over analyzing or underestimating figures because when it comes to doing the actual project how long something takes people think yeah yes we'll get that done in a few weeks but actually is it going to take a few weeks it might take much longer it might be delays with planning there might be other things you need to think about is the builder that you need to do the work are they even available and then how much things are going to cost people can be very unrealistic as well and remember when you're asking other people for their opinions in terms of doing refurbs and the cost of those ask people with experience rather than the bob down at the pub who really thinks it might be this much but actually has no clue now the third thing which is the key mistake I see people making is one we're gonna talk about in the office. And this uh, area that we're in right now is actually a key indicator of that in terms of how different the figures can be all in the same location. The third biggest mistake that I see people making when they're trying to find deals is distinguishing between price and value. So what's the difference between those two? Price is what you will pay for a property and value is what is it going to be worth to you or what can it be worth to you as a deal? So for example, let's say you're at an auction, you're bidding at a property and you're the winner of that bid and it's fantastic you've got that property. Now some people will view that as, hey, well done, you've, you've, got, the, uh, you've got the deal that you were looking for. Other people will perceive it well, hey, you are the person that prepared to pay more than anybody else. Is that the smartest thing to do? But the reality is we don't know what that property is worth to an individual. You may be bidding at the auction thinking I'm only prepared to go to 120 because that's what it's worth to me. Whereas somebody else might be thinking, well, I'm happy to pay 160 for this because what it's going to be worth to them, depending on what they're going to do. So price is something that's superficial. It might be what somebody's asking for, but it's not necessarily what you should go by. So when you're looking at the figures on a property, uh, we're not saying disregard the figure completely in terms of what the asking price is, but it's taking that into consideration, but ultimately it's about what it's worth to you. So for example, uh, one of the things that we do is we take um, houses like the one we were in earlier on, and we force the appreciation of that property. We force it up significantly more than it starts off to be. So for instance, if we're purchasing say at 250,000, pound and the end value is 500,000 we know we can get that value up what we're looking for is the right type of house in the right location so the asking price might be 250 I might be prepared to pay 250 that's great it may be the asking price is 260 but for me it's only worth 250 so I can only go to 250 or the asking price might be 220 and I might think well actually I can go up to 250 so if I get into a little bit of a bidding war I can push up my price Whereas some people make the mistake saying the asking price is 220, so I need to get a discount off that. I need to drive that price down. I'm not going to feel good until I've got that figure down and I know I've won at that negotiation. But you are not winning in that negotiation because you're dismissing what it's going to be worth to you. And that's the key thing when looking at figures is to make sure you understand what the asking price is, what somebody wants as a figure, versus what is it going to be worth to you, what can you do with it, whether you're going to force the value up, say for example, as a HMO, as I mentioned earlier on, it might be you're flipping the property, how much value you're going to add, that's the thing you need to look for. And I'll do another video around um, valuations, and particularly HMO valuations, how we force those up, so make sure you look out for that. So thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video.